well, uh, it's very good to be preceded by uh, uh, Brian's speech because, um, well, that relates a lot to me because I'm a psychiatrist. I'm starting to study ayahuasca. Well, I've been studying for a while in a more scientific way. But I also used to be a member of the UDV. So I started drinking and stayed there for quite a long time. And I've just um, uh, departed from that uh, institution for, you know, new ways, new paths. And so uh, definitely it, um, it, influ it influences in many ways. I mean, us who are um, among this field, in this field and may have had contact with uh, ayahuasca or other psychedelics and the expansion that, that might bring to us and how this can relate to science. So in some sort of way, um, the questions I'm going to bring and, and some of the answers which are not much, I mean, strong and they are more, they kind of bring more questions to us, have to do with this uh, story that I'm telling you. So let's see it, and it's, it's a very simple presentation. I'm going to present you some results from the study um, we've been doing um, with, uh, we've been analyzing actually, because the study has been done, the data has been collected. And it's a multidisciplinary team, team led, by, led by Paulo Barbosa, who wasn't able to come here. And um, with people from the Un University of New Mexico, and myself from Campinas, and also Paulo is from uh, Universidad, uh, uh, University in Bahia, Brazil, and also Michael Winkerman. So one thing important that we, we have to keep in mind, because I'm going to talk about quality of life, and also this is kind of two presentations really, really we should have put in separately. But since there are some, we have some interesting information to show you, we, we decided to put it together. And originally the idea was for this study to analyze uh, the history of past drug use for in UDV members. But we also included an instrument of quality of life and we also included, since we were going to do a survey, an inquiry about the use of SSRIs. I'm going to show you why this. And, but first of all, before we talk about quality of life, we have to keep in mind that we are not talking about just giving ayahuasca to people. There's, there's a context, there's a context, context of religious use. And uh, um, that relates as well. We have some studies that relates religious use to quality of life. And there are some criticism about the concept, even the concept of spirituality within quality of life, saying that perhaps people may be confusing wellness, well-being, mental wellness with quality of life. And so there are some issues, some methodological issues that, in my opinion, haven't been unresolved. You probably know that there are connections between psychedelics and well-being, and sometimes not so direct, sometimes it might be very harsh, but in a long term. Uh, so that's something that's worth studying. And also, this has been done, this has been, has been um, um, shown here in, in other uh, uh, ways of uh, publicizing research that there is a connection between mental wellness and ayahuasca. And I won't go through all the, these uh, uh, studies, but just to let you know that, just to make, just to picture that we, of course, there's not much research done in terms, this is in terms of, you know, if you're talking about hardcore uh, uh, scientists and neuroscientists and psychiatrists, they'll say, oh, we, don't have, we don't have enough data. But people who have been working with that are very proud to show that, that it, there is some evidence that it, the, the, in different settings and different situations, either uh, evaluated qualitatively or quantitatively, there is some connection between ayahuasca and some sort of uh, well-being, and that could be connected to uh, quality of life as well. So this, uh, uh, this is a, a set of uh, qualitative studies, and we also have some, uh, uh, sorry, quantitative studies, and we also have some qualitative studies studies who also present uh, um, the experience of ayahuasca as something that would bring new uh, life and new light to previous experiences and that could be connected also to quality of life um, and that's worth 
measuring it. Also, um, the, as I said, I'm going to talk about actually two subjects. So the other su subject is the question of SSRIs. SSRIs are mostly anti used uh, as antidepressants, and um, there is a, 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 a now it's, we can be said it's a little bit old uh, paper by Calloway and Grob where they alerted about the risk of serotonin syndrome by the combination of ayahuasca and SSRIs, and that's, um, you know, whenever you, you go to any people who has some information, especially, especially the Westerners, they will say, no, never take ayahuasca with, with an SSRI. You might die, this is absolutely forbidden. And uh, at the same time, in the, in the settings, uh, in the religious settings in Brazil, people are taking these drugs for and for depression, for anxiety disorders, and they are going to, even, even because they are looking for healing, they are going to these religious uh, institutions, and um, there might be no so tight a control and people are not so well informed about it. So, uh, and what we know, we know that a lot of people are taking these drugs and are drinking ayahuasca and they are not dying. This is a fact. And then we wanted to measure that in some way. So that's the, one of the reasons we inserted these questions within this survey. And we're going to see what we have to, uh, in a very preliminary way, what we can assess from that. So the aims of this study was to assess factors um, associated with quality, high or lower quality of life in a sample of subjects from the UDV. Uh, and it's important to stress that they regularly drink ayahuasca in a religious context. And also to analyze reports, some reports of effects of uh, possible interactions between SSRIs and ayahuasca. Um, the setting was the UDV. Brian told you about, uh, a bit about this uh, religion to you. Um, it was founded in 1961 by Mestre Gabriel, Robert Tapper named João Gabriel da Costa. It is uh, Christian, syncretic, uh, has reincarnationist uh, principles, and um, the, the, the rituals are very well structured, and um, also there is um, a stress on discipline. Um, the service subjects, so one, point, one point that is very important about this sample is that it wasn't a random sample. We didn't, we didn't like, uh, did a lottery to find who we were going to, to, to who we were going to collaborate with us. They, we just went to the to the temples and asked them who would help, who wanted to collaborate, who would volunteer for that. So there is this self-selection situation that we're going to see that it, it might be important for. It is certainly important for the interpretation of, the, of our results. Eight years and older, and they had to be literate because it was a self. Full, uh, soft, um, questionnaire, self-rated questionnaires that were used for that. So they had to know how to read and write. Um, this is very important because the UDV was very collaborative with this study and the UDV um, used and, and, and gave the help of the monitors of the medical department. Yes, the UDV has a medical department. And uh, they helped distributing the, the forms for people or the, the, the access codes for the online survey. And uh, one, important, one important part of it is that uh, there was a strong stress on confidentiality and anonymity. So uh, the monitors didn't know what people were answering and the researchers didn't know which people were answering what. So it was, we, we we made us uh, some sort of double, uh, uh, we were blind to different situations, to different information, so we couldn't really make any connections, and monitors couldn't get to the information, researchers couldn't identify uh, subjects. 62% um, of, the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the forms were online, the rest were on paper. Oh, this, uh, there should be a picture here. There, uh, there was a map of Brazil. <laughs> I wanted to tell you that uh, UDV has, uh, at the moment, 16,000 members, and it's distributed in 17 regions in Brazil. Some, some states have two regions. Some regions um, encompass two or three states. 
But uh, let's see. These are the the states that were where we we had some um, subject survey. Uh, the distribution was a, wasn't a, a, a random distribution, and so it was. I mean, it depended on how how many people wanted to collaborate, and also depend. This depended on the local situation of the temple, if there was support from the local leader or not. So we had a pretty much pretty viable response rate, but in general, we, have, we had a 40% response rate. We couldn't really say about response rate because we asked everybody who would volunteer. We didn't select people and, and then we would see if they would uh, adhere or not, or not to, the, to the study. So, but just to let you know that uh, considering the temples, in terms of temples, we have um, done the survey. 40% of the subjects, 40% of the members of these temples uh, did the, the research, were, were volunteers of this research. So it was 36 temples, and uh, they, uh, if we would consider the universe, it would be a universe of almost 10,000 people. That would be, this, this sample which we would be 12% of the whole UDV population. We use the social demographic questionnaire. We use also a WHO structure instrument for uh, the evaluation of quality of life called Who Call Breath, which was validated for Portuguese language. I, I'm not going into the data about um, drug use and drug abuse, but it also, we also use in a structure and validated interview. And also we ask them about the use, the previous and present use of uh, antidepressants, basically SSRIs and uh, monamine oxidase inhibitors. And we also asked them whether they, are taking the, they had taken these drugs with ayahuasca, and if so, if they had an experience. And if so, they would describe the experience to us in a very, didn't, they didn't have much space for that. It was very synthetic, but anyway, it could give us an idea of what, what was happening. So um, about the analysis, we would compare. We compared uh, the quality of life and SSRIs uh, usage rates. With the, we don't have much references, population, population references in Brazil for that. We have some sort of incomplete papers for that, so this is not going to be very profound. Uh, we also performed a multi-level analysis since we had this data that we, we cannot say about prevalence because for prevalence we should have a, a random sampling. Uh, but we can, uh, and, and so, and since we had nested data, we had individuals within temples and these different levels of comparisons, we use multi level analysis. And also, a general description of uh, SSRI inter interactions, how, the way they were described by the members. Just for you to uh, get a grip on our sample, um, you can see here, this is, the, this is our data from the UDV census from 2012, this, the, uh, just the end of last year. And uh, you can see that it, we had, a, in this sample, an overrepresentation of male subjects. This is important also for something I'm going to say later. Um, there is a, a little bit different uh, profile as well, uh, considering uh, the marital status. A little overrepresentation of married people, and um, less single and less widowed. Inf unfortunately, I don't have the data from the UDV about age, uh, but I think part of this distinction is probably because people from the middle, uh, uh, people from the um, let's say uh, mature adults, adults but not uh, old age and not young people. Um, so the, we had like. People who were, had a, a higher chance of being married, participating, who probably are the people who are most involved with the institution as well. So there might be a, a situation here where people that were more involved with the institution would be a, a, would have a greater chance of volunteering for that. Also, uh, in terms of the education, you're going to see that as, uh, we have a, have a higher represent, representation here of high school and university. And there's an important point that we can see. It's important to be stressed about UDV. There is a much higher proportion of, of, of 
people with university degrees or even postgraduate degrees compared to the general population. So the UDV is, in, in, in a broad sense, a middle class um, religion, and it's not, uh, its population is not repre representative of the Brazilian population at all. Here we have the comparison of the results of the quality of life, life separated by um, male and female subjects, up the, the male and down the female. And in, here we have the percentile of 50, which separates, in a study that was done in Rio Grande do Sul, a region of Brazil, separates the, the half of, the, of, of their sample, and it would be like an average uh, expected uh, value for this instrument of quality of life. So if you have a higher score, then that would mean that you have a, a better score than the general population, at least this particular population. They didn't work with the total score in this, so I can only compare uh, the different uh, dom domains of this uh, instrument, physical, psychological, social, and environmental domains, and one, one thing that is interesting is about the social domain of ODVs below the, the, the percentile 70, 70, 50, which doesn't mean that it's pathological or anything. Uh, uh, the other scores are higher, um, and they fall between 25 and 50, which is pretty normal, but it's also interesting to, to, have, to ask us why this would happen, why this might happen. I don't have a, an answer for that, but I think it's a good question. Hello, hi, <laughs> thank you. Um, what was uh, related to quality of life was uh, age. As age increases, uh, the quality of life uh, gets worse. Gender, women tend to report less, uh, a worse quality of life than men, and this is, this is uh, what we would expect from, from the population. This is normal in all the studies. Uh, years of membership to the UDV was non-significant, but there was a, a, a significant relation between the frequency of ayahuasca use and a better uh, quality of life score. So people with, uh, that would drink more ayahuasca would report better quality of life or higher scores of quality of life. Also, there was connection between education and uh, socioeconomic status, but we chose to include in the model only socioeconomic status because of their um, uh, high correlation and SCS was uh, a better variable to be used. So, considering uh, age, if we controlled for uh, the socioeconomic status, uh, the, this age effect would get, become more evident. And this is the range of the data we had. I mean, uh, 18, from 18 years old to 81. And this was the, the mean around the 40s. And also the frequency of ayahuasca uh, drinking, as I said, was um, it in, it, when it was included in the model, it still had a, a significant effect, uh, but very small effect, perhaps neg negligible. Um, about quality of life, we can say that, uh, generally speaking, they have a better quality of life than general, in the general population sample, but it, we have to be careful about this because it's only one study in Brazil. Uh, we have expected associations with gender, age, and uh, socioeconomic status. Um, and we might think about this effect that uh, people might tend to think, oh, people, when someone is drinking more ayahuasca, this can obviously relate to a better quality of life. Perhaps not. Perhaps we are talking here about commitment to the institution, and perhaps uh, within this commitment to the institution, we, we, we could get a bias towards uh, giving better uh, results, or just a good effect of being part of this community. We don't really know this. We, for that, we, can, we need other um, measures. But what we can say is that it's probably safe to drink ayahuasca within this context. It's not, not something that's ruining people's quality of life. And this is interesting to stress as well. Um, I won't have time to go into that. This is gonna be very, I have only two minutes and this is very hard to explain. And also, uh, I don't know why this didn't appear well in the, in the monitor, so um, I, it, it won't be easy. What, what, I, what I can tell you here is that here we have the frequency of 
people who reported the use of different antidepressants. And um, the most common is fluoxetine, which would be expected. These numbers of the frequency compared to the, to the whole sample is the, number, is the percentage of, of subjects who have reported the use of antidepressants. And this is pretty much what we would expect from the general population in Brazil, and specifically a population of uh, middle class. And, and here we have the number of subjects who have taken ayahuasca while they were having also antidepressants. And uh, it's important to see the number of uh, subjects taking fluoxetine and also people taking subutramine. Subutramine has been forbidden. It doesn't exist in Brazil anymore. It is not an antidepressant. It's, an, an, it's a, a, a medicament for losing weight. And it has some serious side effects, even without ayahuasca. So I'm glad that we won't see this again happening. But the reports of uh, effects was higher also with um, Sibutramine, which is important. But uh, as a general rule, what you can say is, I'm going to show you, it's better if I show you the, this in letters. Um, uh, there was no reported use of a, of a monamine oxidase inhibitor in this, within this sample. As I said, it was the pattern of use of SSRIs is what is, would be expected from the population. And uh, we had 64 subjects reported uh, use of ayahuasca and an SRI and, and, and reported some sort of uh, effect. Sorry, this is, in, uh, this is not in this slide, but they reported these effects. In more female subjects use SSRIs also, which is also would be uh, predicted. Um, one, one interesting point is being a new DV member does not prevent someone apparently for, have, for using SSRI. I mean, we are not talking about very, very, very low rates of uh, uh, antidepressant use. People who enrolled for this subject didn't know they were going to, uh, to answer about that. So I think about specifically this point, there's no probable uh, bias of self-selection. Um, uh, however, it's important to stress that the reporting of the absence of effects when the, while someone was ta were taking the, the two substances, ayahuasca and, a, and one of the antidepressants, was more common than reporting an effect. And they, they, they commonly, these effects were uh, increasing the effect of ayahuasca or were unpleasant, but also there were reports of people who felt that taking together their, their effects were decreased. Thank you. And uh, also that they have pleasant effects. Well, this is the biggest known uh, sample of cases of ayahuasca and SSRI interaction. Of course, there's no warranty of absolute safety, but perhaps and probably right, the risk have, might have been exaggerated considering the literature, literature and, um, uh, I mean, the urban legend that's going with it. But we certainly need more studies. I have, account of, I have the account of a, of a study that has been done with uh, rats, and the results point to a similar situation as I have shown to you. No improvement, no potentialization, but also no deadly effects between the combination. This is a sectional, we have, we're talking about here about sectional data, so it's a survey. We, we cannot talk about cause and effect, it's just association. This is also a non-random sample. So uh, one of the things that people knew, and this is was from the name of the study, was that uh, it was supposed to evaluate uh, drug, past drug use. And this is probably happened that uh, people who ha used to be drug users had a tendency to present themselves for this study because they want to show how they have changed. So this is something we have to take, take into account. Uh, and also the higher probability that someone self-selects if the person has higher institutional commitment. Uh, one point that is very important about the results, and I want to stress it again, is that it's impossible to distinguish religion and ayahuasca effects within this sample. So we, cannot, we can never say what is happening. We can never say because it's a, it's a, a survey. We cannot say about anything uh, much, and I cannot, we cannot extrapolate much about cause and effect, but anyway, uh, even, even uh, if we could, it's difficult to, uh, 
to draw the limits between what is religion and what is the effect of the brew in this situation. Also, we might have some recall bias, especially on the recalling of having taken the drugs, any drugs, but also the SSRIs. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luis. If you have any questions, please come up to the microphone. Um, thank you so much, and congratulations on the work. My question is, um, so the effect of the uh, ayahuasca was less when taking SSRIs? Did I understand correct? No, some people reported some, that. Some reported The most common response was no response. I mean, we asked them, have you taken this drug? Okay. Yes or no? And then, have you taken this drug? While you're taking, we're, you were taking ayahuasca, yes or no? And, and then we have a, look, a special look on this sample who said that yes, they have taken together. And, the most, and then we asked them, have you had any change in, your, in the ayahuasca effect while you're taking the drug? Most said no. Some of them said yes. And most of those who said that had an effect, the effect was not so good. It wasn't good, it wasn't pleasant. Did they explain that pleasant? The, uh, that they, physical, the symptoms that they related most commonly was nausea, oh. dizziness, vomiting, so um, it's tremor. Uh, okay. that, that's the basic uh, group of them. Some other uh, scars, other symptoms as well. Oh, so it, uh, what are your thoughts? So, what are but, your, what are your sorry, ideas but, to. Sorry, just a second. Um, part of them said that they. The, the, the effect was milder. We cannot explain that. We don't know how to explain that. Perhaps people were taking less ayahuasca because they were afraid. Perhaps there's some kind of modulation in the situation. And there are so many, um, um, uh, so many elements that we have to ponder when you're talking about psychedelics. So it's always very difficult to well, The understand. SSRIs and the MAO too, I don't know if the, the SSRIs can probably block the MAO and uh, the enzymes. Um, yeah. Okay. My other question is, do you think the capsule form would change the half-life, the potency, effectiveness, because you guys are working now, um, use the capsule form of the ayahuasca? That's a thoughts? long story. I don't know if we have time for that, because there is some polemics about the results of some studies that have been using the lyophilized form of ayahuasca. Um, what I can say to you about this study is we cannot say anything about it. Perhaps we, we should talk later about it. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, just a quick question. Um, I'm in the Santo Daime for 17 years responsible um, as, a, as a church leader. And we have a protocol that's been developed mostly in North America, but I believe in some centers in South America. For those who are already drinking, uh, ayahuasca or Santo Daime, who are um, being advised to be, uh, go on an SSRI, usually what happens is they do not, they drink a little less the day of the work, and they do not take their antidepressant the day of the work. So I, you didn't mention any of this. I'm not sure if the same thing was in place. M most people also find that they take a little less, and as they, within themselves, uh, make their adjustment on their medication, they come to have an intuition of how much to drink and, and also if they don't take the SSRI the do day following the work. Was this looked into in your study? Uh, this, is a, this is an excellent question because this is, uh, when you're, we're talking about experienced users, they know how to deal with the effects and they control the effects using the amounts that they're taking and also the way they're taking the, their medication. So there, there's no formal indication for that. Uh, within the, there is a general recommendation that, uh, especially for newcomers within the UDV, to lower the doses of ayahuasca when people start take, taking this, uh, when, when these people arrive and they are taking these drugs. Before we had the recommendation, or UDV had a recommendation of saying that uh, it wasn't possible to have that but uh, that people should quit medication before drinking ayahuasca. But after a while, a lot of cases escaped and it just happened. And generally, what uh, psychiatrists who, who either who are or are not of the uh, ayahuasca religions, but who are used to 
Medicaid people who drink ayahuasca, they normally suggest that. Talk to the person who is responsible, make, make the person aware, so the person may lower the doses if necessary, and it's common to say the person not to take the drug the day of the session, on the day of the work, as, as we say, as is said for uh, Santo Daime. And, um, and, uh, but this is a problem for fluoxetine that has a very long half-life, so especially, especially for fluoxetine, it's not a very good drug to be taken if, if there is an option. Um, it's a question about di dieting. Uh, is dieting also taken in consideration when doing clinical studies on ayahuasca as a ceremony? And the second question is what happens if you don't do a diet and take ayahuasca? Is there any consequence? Is there any study Sorry, I that? didn't understand. No, about uh, the diet. Um, oh, the diet. No, uh, okay, specifically for UDV? Yeah, for, for clinical studies for, of ayahuasca or your study, uh, All right. is dieting part of the uh, preparation or no? There's no uh, this is completely different from uh, depending on the tradition of ayahuasca drinking. So there is some sort of dieting in, in, within Santo Daime, which is different from the diet that, that is uh, common in Peru, for instance, has nothing to do. And UDV, for instance, has no diet at all, at all. People may have a feijoada and go to, the same night to a fashion to a session, so it's no, there's no, and apparently people are not dying from that. That I can be sure. That I can assure you. So, um, I see. I tend to see the diet as more as a spiritual uh, connection, uh, uh, more uh, more of a spiritual situation. Perhaps may enhance. I think that probably may enhance the effects of the of the experience. But it's probably not necessary for if the person, if the researcher doesn't want to, to have a diet for a, a clinical trial, for instance. If one might try, may, may, make a, a may do a clinical trial. Thank you. This is a short question and a short answer. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe just a quick comment. Do you have any thoughts that just uh, with, with the UDV, like in our lodge, for instance, we're very concerned about SSRIs and you know, we're part of probably this scare tactic, American style. Uh, but one of the reasons why is we're in a very remote location, and so we're in the jungle, we don't want to deal with an emergency. And the other reason is that, you know, it, I don't, I'm not totally familiar, I'm waiting to go to my UDV ceremony, but we do typically use a much more concentrated ayahuasca, yeah, and I think that is. may play into this issue of dosage. Yeah, I think that's a, probably a very good idea to take some more care in a more remote situation. I, I, I totally agree. Also, uh, Bia remind me of something very important when you're talking about diet, uh, the abstinence of uh, alcohol when people, someone is taking ayahuasca is very important. It may be very harsh, the situation. So this is also part, of, and this, this is probably part of all the, the traditions because there might be a physiological uh, reason for that that we don't know any, uh, yet. Is that, is that a consideration in this research, the strength of, I guess it comes out in the DMT quantities and the milliliters, but that it does seem there is a range compared like in the UDV tradition this is versus uh, traditional indigenous tradition. This is very subjective, but what, um, you probably have to drink with someone, talk with someone who have drank in the different traditions. Beer is a very good uh, person for you to talk about it, but from what I, from what I gather, from what people tell me, um, for instance, traditions like you're working with, it's a much more concentrated ayahuasca than the than Santo Daime, and probably UDV is the less concentrated. But it, it varies a lot. It depends on, on the situation. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis.